listeners and subscribers hope all is well so not long ago um, I was talking about a video I didn't make that I wanted to make right there was uh, I was talking about how the the sky was looking absolutely crazy and how they were just spraying all these chemtrails the day before and then you know the next day for for the following hours the sky was just completely blanketed in this this chemical you know haze uh, and air quality was affected. Okay, and I didn't get a chance to capture the video of them laying the trails, so I didn't want to say anything about it and only show the video of the of the chem cover. So today, <laughs> um, I am going to show you exactly what I was talking about. Now, this happened in California. It happens in Phoenix. It happens in Nevada. It happens in all the states that I've been in so far. Okay, and I've even seen vestiges over in, in Japan and in Mexico. Okay, so it's this is a global. It, it's a worldwide campaign. Many areas are affected whether it's it's densely populated or not it seems to be but you see these these chemtrail covers um they'll come and they'll spray these uh these clouds right these chem these chemtrails and they'll go and form into these clouds and they'll stay all day okay so the video you're looking at right now this was captured on on oh, i forget the date but it was captured on one day right and now this video you're looking at was captured the next day, the very next day. And we're not talking about planes from the airport. Okay, I've lived by airports for most of my life. Um, I see the airports coming, or the airplanes landing as they come and they go, and when they have something behind their engines and when they don't. Okay, so I'm not an amateur observer here, all right? But looking at this stuff, this stuff lasts uh, for hours, all right? And then they also had a warning for uh, special groups who were at risk for you know because of the air quality so they come one day they spray all this stuff they lay it down and then the next day right uh, it's absolutely cloud covered and they're saying oh well you could be impacted because the air quality is poor well I wonder why <laughs> you know what I'm saying um, I wonder why it's no big mystery okay now that's just uh, one part of this this strangeness my week of strange right my wife had sent me a snapshot of a text message she got uh, we moved out of the Sacramento area about four or five months ago and we're here in Arizona now but she still got this text message from the 916 area code um, the Sacramento area from a company an organization I, I'm not sure uh, if it's real I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and give them give it a Google search but it says hi Camarilla I'm Jesse with new conversation initiative we're talking to people in Sacramento County about immigration would you say you're in favor undecided or against local police reporting undocumented immigrants to federal agents or deportation how divisive is this at a time like this after we just saw uh, the border wall uh, debate after we just saw the national emergency being declared and the stuff happening with New Zealand and the and the rhetoric that was in the manifesto that dealt with immigration and, you know, the rise of this type of uh, rhetoric in general. I mean, it's absolutely crazy how divisive I was like, that's that's kind of weird. Of course, she didn't say nothing back, probably blocked the number, I believe. But I mean, I was like, how how strange is that? Right. And then again, from the Sacramento area, California, you got to love them right? Should unvaccinated children be banned from public places? How divisive are these questions? You know what I mean? It's just like with Brexit, when, when they made the, the, the options, should we leave Brexit? Or, or I mean, should we leave the Eurozone? Or shouldn't we leave the, the Eurozone, right? They, they essentially only gave you those two options. And that's how these, these questions and these narratives are formed. Evermore now is in a divisive way where you don't, you don't talk about these things, you argue about them. It's always deconstructive dialogue, never any constructive dialogue. You hardly go anywhere. It's hard to find any middle ground. And with questionnaires and um, things like this from the media and, and, and stuff like that, no wonder people's talking points are always so divisive. And we can never we can never talk about this stuff. We don't we don't talk about it. We find ways uh, to fight about it. We, we find what can we fight about? Right. Just like what the um, media on the Republican side did after the Mueller probe. Let's try to get something out of the Democrats we'll know we'll never get. And let's make a stink about it until we do, right? So let's try to get the Democrats to apologize for the, the calls for the investigation on the Mueller probe, knowing they'll never get that. But they get their base behind that so they can just find reasons to fight. I mean, that is what the political paradigm is set up to do. Uh, more often than not, it's a get, to get you to fight, never to come together on anything unless both sides um, want you to come together on it, in which case it's something that's probably never really good for the people. It ends up not being good for the people in the long run.
but yeah, I just thought that was interesting. I just wanted to share that really quick. You know, this the the chemtrails there. I, I've talked about it a couple times. Where we're like, wow, it's really bad out here in Phoenix, and I didn't get a chance to capture the video. Well, I just happened to have a chance to capture the video this time. And uh, yeah, the divisive narratives that are out there, out there in California and other places, uh, it's only escalating from here, folks. You know, hold on tight. It's going to be a wild ride. This cold civil war is about to get hot real quick. Uh, anyway, take care of yourselves out there. California Carter, signing off. Thank <music> you.